Good morning and welcome to the Informed Entrepreneur. My name is Heike Heyman. I'm with IdeaShare Business Coaching. Today interviewing Susan Singleton of Pure Bar. How are you? Hi, good morning. How are you? Thank you for having us. This is a beautiful studio. So, um, for starters, could you talk a little bit about what is Pure Bar and what is bar exercise in general? So, Pure Bar is uh, a technique. It's a boutique fitness uh, studio. It is a 55-minute non-impact workout that I like to, to call it an athletic approach infusion of ballet, Pilates, and yoga. Mm -hmm. There's a ballet bar in the room. We use it for stretching and to get deeper into some of our thigh work. Um, it's a fast-paced 55-minute, high-energy, great workout. Our instructors, the music's amazing. It's a lot of fun. Okay, fantastic. So do people have to have a background in one of those three disciplines before they come and Absolutely not. Class. There's no dance background. There's, you don't have to be particularly rhythmic. Um, just come in with an open mind and come in 15 minutes early if it's your first class because there's some terms that you might want to learn and familiarize yourself with just a little bit of the technique. Um, but no, there's, there's no prerequisite. You don't have to be a certain fitness level. It's for all ages, all fitness okay. abilities. And what's the average age that comes through your doors? I think for our studio, our well, our youngest client is between 16 and 18, and our oldest client, I believe, is 84. So um, there's no, our demographic is so big here. It's one of the reasons why I love the Annapolis community is it's, it's, it's broad. It's, it's not like a 18 to 34, 18 to 45. Okay. We've got all fitness ranges, all shapes, all sizes. It's, it's a great community here in the studio. Are all your clients women? The majority of our clients are women. We do have some men that frequent the studio pretty regularly. And then we also, um, since some of the women become so addictive, we uh, have a, a specialized class. It's called Bring on the Men. We try to do that once a month. We need to get better about having that actually once a month. But our, our clients will bring their husbands, brothers, dads into the studio so they can see what, what they're all talking about. And and that's, it's really a lot of fun. Is it sort of a, a competition then to see if the men can keep up? Well, it, it's funny because our warm-up is, you know, there's, there's a floor warm-up, there's a standing warm-up to get the heart rate up, and then there's a floor warm-up that continues to get the heart rate up, and then you incorporate weights. And right in the beginning of that warm-up, you can see the men, when we go from the standing to the floor, they're like, the warm-up's not done, or that was just the warm-up. Like, that the men are surprised pretty quickly. Okay. That's actually great to see. I think everybody likes to see that. And then that's what gets them hooked or gets them to say, you know. Sometimes <laughs> it gets them hooked, but I think it gives them a true appreciation of, of just how challenging the workout is, how mm -hmm. deeply you work some of the muscles by really moving very small. Mm -hmm. So. And that's great that it is no impact so it is something that somebody can do long term right we have lots of people that come in after surgery or have running injuries there's certain modifications we can give them to some of the work but also um, just having the non-impact workout to really strengthen the joints mm -hmm. and the muscles is is super beneficial especially for runners that have injured themselves okay can you go a little bit into um, how you got into this business I've always been fitness minded. Um, in college, I went to West Virginia University and there wasn't a varsity team that I was on, but club crew, so rowing, club lacrosse. Um, before that in high school, I played uh, team sports and I've always enjoyed fitness as a release mm -hmm. for me physically. And when I was in New York, I kind of fell in love with the boutique fitness concept where mm -hmm. it's, you know, a specialized studio with specifically trained trainers, usually in a specific technique. Mm -hmm. um, and when I was up in New York, I, I fell in love with that. There were spin studios that I fell in love with. There was a bar method that I fell in love with. And I ran into Pure Bar, and there was an opportunity to open a studio. And it, before it happened, it had kind of snowballed into right. me interviewing and accepting opening the studio in Annapolis. So, it, you know, it, it happened really quickly. Now, Pure Bar is a national franchise concept. So could you talk a little bit about... Uh, what it's like to be a franchisee um, and maybe some things that you didn't expect early on in terms of the business side of things. You, so when, when you sign on with a franchise, the, the beautiful thing about that is you can, you know, your training is usually taken care of. So you're trained in a technique. They support you with um, 
training, ongoing training materials, you know, original training, ongoing training materials. Um, they supply resources like music and where you get your bars and where you buy your equipment, um, along with having the franchise themselves, which gives us a lot of support. There's also the franchise base, which is all the owners. And we have avenues where we, um, you know, we go to convention every year, but then we also connect on Facebook through certain mm -hmm. um, mediums and, and talk about issues we're having within the studio or issues we have with training or areas where we can reach out as a franchise base as a whole to speak to the corporate base about you know things we'd like to see done a little different or 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 just you know it's it's different to be a franchise er and be the franchise e because we're in the studio on the street in the studio if you will every day and we can mm -hmm. see what's what's actually happening in real time right so we work together and become a voice for right. that but and as a franchisee, you get not only the training about bar technique and teaching, but how to run a business, correct? A little bit of that. That, that, that really is, is, is what you learn on your own. Okay. Uh, and so that was my big learning curve. And I, I was telling you earlier that when I look back, for some reason just the other day, I was going through some of my old emails and some of my binders that we had put together to, to get the studio open and then during the build out. And I look at some of the conversations I had to have and, and some of the to-do list items I had and it blows my mind. Just just the enormity of uh, the risk and responsibility you're taking mm -hmm. on. And what you talked about earlier was finding a location, um, the build out since you basically leased a box that yeah. had to be yeah. equipped with walls and paint and the bars themselves and right. decoration. Um, so, so you talked about maybe working with contractors and uh, you had mentioned a piece of advice about the real estate part of it earlier. Would you like to share that again? Get someone that really knows how to look over your lease. <laughs> um, lease, lease is um, one of the biggest costs you're going to have is probably going to be um, your lease, your rent, it's, it's your fixed cost. So, you know, every month, especially in, in, in slower months, summertime in the fitness industry is slow. Um, Annapolis goes on vacation for all of the summer and usually really all of August. So um, when you have fixed costs that are really high, you have to, to consider that when you have a really great month, um, you may be tempted to, to kind of cushion your, your draw, if you will. Mm -hmm. um, or maybe take that vacation that you didn't think you could take, but, but you really have to learn to forecast out and know, um, my, my, here's my costs that are going to stay the same. Mm -hmm. And um, if, if you can, in the beginning, kind of manage those to, to a level that you'll be comfortable with um, and not have surprises, at least when you get it, it's, it's a, a huge document. So I would really recommend um, either having a specialized commercial lease lawyer mm -hmm. Uh, definitely one of those that will go over your contract with you so there are no big surprises. Mm -hmm. And then um, uh, the, uh, the person that helps you, you find your location too, right, that, that knows about what the going square footage rents are and, mm -hmm. and maybe an opportunity that you don't see a signage on the street. I found this place, I, I, I got in my car and drove for two days and scouted out every single place that I wanted because I knew the Anne Arundel county mm -hmm. pretty well and then found this and I you our rents really really high and it is a fixed cost explosion for me every month but I there's not a place logistically that I think the studio would have been better suited mm -hmm. as as the first really bar studio in Maryland right. and then definitely the first boutique fitness almost in this area aside from there's lots of yoga studios that are very boutique and specialized mm -hmm. too but this really is probably one of the first truly boutique fitness concepts in the right. area now you had mentioned earlier that um, the location doesn't provide for a lot of natural foot traffic that is a potential new client. So you find your customers through social media and other marketing efforts. Can you elaborate a bit on that? Social media, um, we uh, were allowed to uh, create a Facebook page five weeks before we opened. We couldn't do it before that. So we were a little limited in that. We immediately ran a new client special, used uh, Twitter, social media. We would get in front of the camera and post as much as we could on our own pages, share that with friends. 
um, lots of word of mouth. We were open for two weeks ahead of time. We offered community classes mm -hmm. at no cost. So we had people coming in then, and we would then try to convert those people into clients that love to be right. here and stay. But we don't have a big branding presence nationally, really, at all with advertising. No print advertising, no real radio or media advertising. So a lot of what we've done has been uh, word of mouth, which Annapolis is great for that. Mm -hmm. When people fall in love with something here, everyone knows about it. So we've been very lucky, and our clients are, are really good to us in that. But yes, yeah, social media has been great. And then uh, word of mouth. The foot traffic is not what I thought it would be here. I thought with the shopping center, but we are a little protected on the end, and it's such a big shopping center that people really don't come down this way all mm -hmm. that much. Most right. of our, our um, retail traffic is from our clients in the studio, not a lot of right. walk-ins. That, that surprised me. Mm -hmm. I was expecting a little more walk-in traffic. Okay. And speaking of retail, there is a retail component to Pure Bar in terms of uh, the fitness wear. Um, some jewelry um, and some accessories, etc. So, um, even though you can't see it on the camera, Fabulous there is clothing. retail <laughs> to this concept. Um, something else that you mentioned that I really wanted to follow up on was um, the impact of having this particular type of franchise on your daughters uh, and and their development as they head towards careers. Can you elaborate a bit on that? I, I think that um, my daughters who see me as a business owner now and um, the struggles, but then also the, the rewards that, mm -hmm. that I reap from owning the business, I have two of them, well all three have been in the studio working in some capacity, but two of my daughters are actually employees of mine. So they get to see um, how to handle situations that make you a resourceful employee or just maybe an employee that is, you know, getting by, a, a mm -hmm. clock puncher, right. if you will. Um, they, they have learned to solve problems on their own by picking up the phone. A lot of times, sometimes I always tell my employees to feel free to call me or text me if they ever have an issue because I can walk through that with them. So that's completely all right with me. I think a lot of times my daughters don't want to reach out to their mother, so they'll pick up the phone. It's taught them to become really resourceful and maybe step out of the comfortable box that they're in and, and, and find avenues to, to solve problems. That makes me really proud, and I think that mm -hmm. they like to come home and share that too. You also mentioned that uh, one of them um, kind of questioned the other recently yeah. about <laughs> some aspects of, of the business. <laughs> <laughs> I have, a, I have um, you know, there's different personality types, and, and one of my daughters is very strong-willed, and she's a rule follower. So she will often check my other daughter, and even me sometimes, she questions some of the, um, some of uh, my, my choices I will make as far as a retail purchase or deciding how to price something out, or it's, 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 it's funny to see how they've kind of grown into leadership women on their own. Mm -hmm. um, and, I, and I think one of the beautiful things about it is they see how hard I work and they see some of the struggles and how exhausting it can be. Um, just with, you know, it's, it's seven days a week, it's 12, 13 hours a day that the studio is open. And even at night, something could go wrong, the alarm could go off in the middle of the night, or if someone, mm -hmm. we had issues with people stealing the copper out of the, the air conditioning units. I mean, you just, you never know when you close your eyes, you never turn your phone right. off. Um, but one of them said something to me so simply the other day. She said, Mom, it's so amazing to see some of the women that come in and what an impact it's made on them. I mean, there's friendships that have been made in the studio. There's friendships that have been made with our clients and instructors, and there's women that have come in a little beaten, maybe worn down, looking for something, mm -hmm. and maybe not have had a community like this, and they, they've suddenly created a community. It's, just, I, it's beautiful. Yes. I, I like to see yeah. that, and I'm so glad that they picked up on that, too. And the community is certainly an important thing. Um, before we forget, uh, yeah. you had brought some devices out here. Did you want to go over what besides the bar itself you actually use in your classes? Uh, yes, we do. So, um, the, so the music in the room really drives the class. Our instructors don't talk an awful lot. We're there to offer encouragement. We're there to get you set up and kind of walk you through the choreo moves. But the bar, the music drive the, the class. We have um, all the equipment's in the room. We have single bands that are used for stretching. 
We have balls that are used to kind of go a little deeper and maybe thigh work or to stabilize yourself holding onto either, you know, above with the hand squeezing in, um, finding your balance. And then we have um, two other tubes. There's a double band that we use for resistance. That would be this one. This is actually the Velcro band that attaches to the bar. It's got loops for your hands or your feet. It doesn't make your work, um, it's not an advanced level mm -hmm. with any of the tubes, but it's, it's just kind of a tool we use to, to go a little deeper, maybe engage different parts of the bodies. This particular tube you use mostly on the hands, and you'll have your hands either out, down, low, or here. So it really, mm -hmm. even though you're working your thighs at the bar, you're stabilizing and lifting through the upper body and then working okay. through the arms too. So one of the beautiful things about bars, not only makes you strong, mm -hmm. but you become more focused, your core elongates and strengthens and your posture improves greatly right, that's that's huge so speaking of the physical aspect of uh, things and you mentioned earlier that some of these um, routines can be helpful to people doing a post-injury rehab do you get referrals from medical professionals um, that say you know so and so um, has exhausted their let's say um, physical therapy allotment through their insurance and now they need to continue working on certain things. Is this a good next step? Actually, that would be a wonderful resource. Um, we haven't worked with the medical community much mm -hmm. or alternative medicine much. You had mentioned that earlier and I thought that would be wonderful. Mostly what we've had is clients that have become their own advocates Mm -hmm. after an injury that have researched a little bit, you know, the, the consumer anymore these days, especially women, are, are very intelligent and highly mm -hmm. motivated and there's so many resources. So right. they've really become their own advocates and they've they figured out that this would be something they'd like and they actually mm -hmm. take information back to either their chiropractor or acupuncturist, okay. or primary care physician. All right. But okay. there's so many wellness um, centers and it's such a big community in this area mm -hmm. that that would be a wonderful place for us to kind of have a little outreach with. Right. Um, in terms of outreach, you had mentioned that you actually do some of that, um, not just in this shopping center itself, but beyond. Could you address a little bit about how you use that and how maybe someone else, even in a different field, could use the community to help promote their business? Definitely. I think um, when you... Well, supporting other businesses is huge. So when you find businesses that you can partner with in either... Um, you know, your thought process or your uh, approach or the, the lifestyle, the branding that your mm -hmm. particular um, studio or store or, or business office has. Uh, using those people and working with those people to self-promote mm -hmm. um, is wonderful. We take the bar class. It's a modified bar class, of course, because we can't take the power of music that we have or the bars or a lot of the equipment with us. Um, but we will do a tiny, a mini kind of introduction to the studio. Mm -hmm. uh, Off-site, we've done it at Lululemon, which is a fitness store. We did it um, right out off uh, Robert Andrews. There's a small salon there where, where we had a class, too. And mm -hmm. people have so many questions about what a bar class is, really, that you know mm -hmm. they'll go and take the class, but there's so many questions. I think sometimes people are intimidated to walk into a gym or a fitness studio right. a lot of times. Yes. So when we go off-site, it gives us an opportunity to kind of go go there mm -hmm. where maybe they're a little right. more comfortable and they're not having to walk in right. to you know a door which then shuts yes. in their here. So um, another thing you mentioned earlier is something that probably a lot of business owners face and that is someone from inside the business leaving and opening something similar or directly competing down the street. Can you address a little bit how how you've dealt with that and any advice you might have for someone that happens to? I think being extremely gracious and kind um, is good. I, I feel like um, when you build a team, we, there's, we have 20 employees. So some are our instructors and some are, are what we call bartenders. It's my, my front desk crew mm -hmm. that is the kind of face of the studio. And my liaison into the studio is what I, my bartenders are. But uh, I think, number one, you always support your team. Mm -hmm. and you want them to reach their goals. You can't limit them to what they are to you in the right. studio. We, we had a, 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 two instructors, actually, that left here to pursue um, different fitness avenues, and one of them is opening a boutique fitness studio right in the shopping center. And, you know, I'm so proud of her and so happy for her, mm -hmm. and she gave me 100% when she was here, so supporting her. She was actually in the studio last night. She took a class. I've asked her to bring her 
crew into my studio and I'd love to go over there before she opens mm -hmm. and have a photo opportunity for her with our instructors and post that on our social media page. I've announced her in the studio and, and talked about, we won't talk about her, her studio much in my studio, right. but, um, but definitely promoting her and just knowing mm -hmm. that, you know, the, the fitness industry in Annapolis is, it can, it can, there's enough for everyone. Right, right. So it's, it's really like in any business. Uh, matter of um, relationships and um, establishing what sets you apart. So um, even if there were another bar studio down the street, there would be things that are different here. It could be the retail, it could be the specific instructors, it could be some technique that is taught here that's not there and things like that. Or sometimes it's just the atmosphere. Um, so that's really important. Did you do something in particular outside of the parameters of the franchise to create a culture within the studio among your um, instructors and clients, or did that come about naturally? Uh, well, I, you know, I'm really proud of the fact that we're going on year three, and I still have my opening team of instructors that's fantastic. with me. I don't, I don't think that happens often, especially because, you know, well, we, I. When we brought our instructors on, it was an older group of women, and I say mm -hmm. older meaning women with children. Right. Um, and a lot of people thought we were absolutely crazy and had lost our mind because they thought that we weren't going to have instructors that could give us 100% or be available, you know, mm -hmm. during early morning hours or weekends or right. night times. But what what actually happened is I've had the most dedicated team of instructors. That yeah. They've been with me three years. They've seen the good, the bad, the ugly. Yes. You know, we've been through. There's been tears. Mm -hmm. As we're training, um, so there's been lots of laughter, but uh, yeah, I think that I did something a little unconventional mm -hmm. there, and it has worked out to my benefit, and I, I couldn't be happier with I mean, the women. I've surrounded myself with incredibly talented people that are more talented than me, are smarter mm -hmm. than me. Right. Sometimes they've got a little more level head than me, so I mean, they've just been amazing women to have as part of my team. And are a lot of them full-time, or is it more part-time? All of our instructors are really part-time contractors, mm -hmm. if you will. So, you know, some of them work full-time. There's teachers, or they um, work in government sectors, or they work in graphic design. Some are stay-at-home moms, but, you know, a stay-at-home mom anymore is actually juggling three children, two children, school, right, right. sports. Yes. So... Um, and, and hiring that demographic may actually be an advantage because they don't have that many opportunities. Most companies want to hire someone full-time or not at all, and you're offering them an avenue that probably makes them more loyal than maybe if you insisted on full-time or a standard traditional part-time that one might find in an office setting, yeah. um, which is fantastic. But it also sounds to me like you have created an atmosphere that is very open in sharing the business aspect of your franchise with your team in terms of mentioning that you've, they've seen the ups and downs. Do you think that's an important part in why they're so loyal? I, I do because I, I, think, I, think that they've, I think they're so connected to the studio. Um, they've seen what it's become and they've seen how we've grown and the impact mm -hmm. that we've had in the community. And I think that, I would hope to think that most of them feel empowered to, to make decisions um, in the studio mm -hmm. that I would reward them for, even if it's a mistake. I think they've seen me make lots of mistakes. Mm -hmm. They've offered me advice that I've, I've taken and they've changed my mind lots of times. Uh, that's, that's fantastic that you take that attitude of learning and growing and, and, and welping, welcoming other input, um, which I'm sure also has a positive impact on the amount of turnover you have. Something that a lot of business owners overlook is the actual cost of staff turnover. When you, let's say, in your specific um, uh, industry, you can't offer a class because you lost an uh, instructor that you can't replace. But in a, in a general setting, just having to interview and, and the person doing the interviews missing time doing their work because now they have to focus on the whole interview concept. So. Um, yeah, it, the loyalty you've built here is, is really fantastic. So, any other general advice in terms of running a franchise or some of the other outside vendors you have to deal with, let's say CPAs, lawyers, I mean, who else supports you in the community to make this business successful? 
like I said earlier, with just you know, surround yourself with really talented people. Do your research um, and, and get the people that are going to work for you. Um, I, I, you. Opening the studio, I'm like I said, I was surprised when I look back at the many facets of things that I had to to get really good at really quickly mm -hmm. that I, I, I really had no idea of. Um, always get three estimates. Always. <laughs> you might not want to, but always get three estimates. But I, I think that even though sometimes we might have paid a little more for some services, the, the people that we hired to do the things that we had to ask them to do, they got it done quickly. Um, they did it well. Mm -hmm. and, you know, the just talented people. There's so many of them, but you just have to and control your fixed costs. Yes. At all costs. <laughs> and, and, and with your vendors. Um, you know, you need to also, with our retail presence, um, I've made some mistakes with retail. Okay. It's very easy to overspend with retail. It's very easy to, to spend maybe not so wisely because you have to, you know, you're forecasting out three to six months in the fashion world. Mm -hmm. So you need to make sure that you're always honest with them. Um, if you need to adjust an order or you can't, maybe make the commitment that you originally made to them. You need to reach out to them as soon as you can and be as open and honest with what you can mm -hmm. do right. um, and respect the fact that they're also business people and it's yes. their business and it's, right. it's money and, and, and their time too. Yes. I think a lot of times people don't really realize that you know this is a studio that is supporting me and supporting my family and mm -hmm. it's, it's though it is something I love, it, it also, I need to be generating income at the same time. Right, so, right. Um, just one more twist here, um, there's the business stress um, and then there is balancing family life with that and uh, how do you deal with that? You said you're open seven days a week, you're here most of the time, how does that impact the rest of your life? It's just now not impacting it as deeply. I think um, I was so ingrained in it probably the first two years that I didn't know anything anything more mm -hmm. than that. Um, as we're going into year three, which is, you know, three years of the studio being open in November, but it's really almost four years if you look at mm -hmm. when the concept and then just starting and then, you know, financing and creating the space and the build out. Um, I think you really need to pay attention to, to, mm -hmm. to how hard you're working and making sure that you set some time by yourself. Someone had asked me the other day, you know, are there any good um, business books that you would read or recommend and I thought to myself you know, I am so ingrained in the industry and, and reading you know ads in the journal or staying abreast of what's going on online and in the boutique industry mm -hmm. and fitness itself and even in the local community that when I read I love to, to read something that's fiction or, or totally not right. something that I would would have to read because right. when, when you have something you love and it becomes your business yeah. you have to be really careful that you continue to love it because when you walk in these doors people know immediately if you're not in love with what you do. Yes, yes. I so appreciate you having us it's here today. Uh, it's a beautiful studio and Thank I hope you. some of our um, audience will come to visit. It's Pure Bar in the Harbor Center in Annapolis. Again, my name is Heike Heyman with Idea Show Business Coaching and we were hosted today by Susan Singleton. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, anytime. <laughs>